Hey guys! So the Dardanelles have always been strategically important for Turkey, which we know from historical events. It connects the Sea of Marmara to the Aegean Sea, and then the Mediterranean. Its name comes from the ancient city Dardanellia located nearby. Along with the Bosporus, these straits serve as the border between Europe and Asia. Despite its significance, the continents were previously connected by just three bridges and two tunnels across the Bosporus, and they were all in Istanbul, which caused large traffic jams both on land and at sea. The new suspension bridge motorway is 15,118 feet long and was opened on March 18, 2022, which connected Europe and Asia at the Dardanelles for the first time. The bridge is in the Kanakil province in northwestern Turkey and is called 1915 Kanakil in honor of an important Ottoman naval victory during World War I. This event was one of the key moments of the epic that let Turkey maintain its independence and keep its control over the Bosporus and Dardanelles. It's interesting that the Dardanelles from Abdios to Sest only had a bridge once back in 480 BCE, when Emperor Xerxes ordered two bridges created out of ships tied together. The first bridge was made of 360 ships, and the second out of 314. When the soldiers returned, the bridges were destroyed by storms. The Turkish government decided to solve the problem and build a bridge for the first time in 1988. But because of a series of political and economic reasons, the project was frozen in 1995. But now, over 20 years later, the Turks relaunched the project in 2016. After a year, the contract was awarded to a local conglomerate of construction companies and two South Korean corporations. And the construction began in September 2017. Specialists confirm that when it came to choosing a bridge design to cross such a large gap, it has to be a suspension bridge, so it's no surprise that the Turks chose that design for such a large gap. The main central span can be very long with a minimal amount of material, which is very efficient when building bridges across wide ravines or bodies of water. This is largely because suspension bridges can be built high above the water with space beneath for passing ships. Suspension bridges are relatively malleable and can flex in strong wind or seismic activity without damaging the structure. whereas other bridges need to be built stronger and heavier. Additionally, suspension bridges look beautiful, and one of the most famous examples is the Golden Gate Bridge across the San Francisco Bay. The bridge across the Dardanelles is built on two towers that are over 1,000 feet tall, taller than the Eiffel Tower by 100 feet. The bridge's support foundations are on the ocean floor about 130 deep on the Asian side and 115 feet on the European side. The bridge's area is known for strong winds up to 80 miles per hour, high seismic activity, and multi-layer container ships, which must be considered. The strong wind is crucial when building a high suspension bridge and a two-shell tower was chosen to provide aerodynamic stability. The testing Lab Force technology in Copenhagen made a model that could withstand 180 mile per hour winds.
A pair of special waterproof cations were submerged 130 feet underwater that were the size of soccer fields. Working on improving the foundation under the base of the Asian Tower included hammering in 165 giant steel posts, seven feet in diameter, and 203 posts for the European Tower. The foundations end in platforms that hold the steel towers. Steel cables are attached at 1,040 feet high, which support the bridge span. Now, if you look inside the cables, you'll see that they are made up of 296 14,000 foot long wires that are made of 126 smaller wires themselves. About 100,600 miles of cable were used in total, which is enough to surround the Earth almost four times. And the entire bridge used 177,000 tons of steel. The span is 150 feet wide, sufficient for six traffic lanes with three in each direction, as well as two paths on each side for pedestrians and maintenance. This bridge shortens the commute between the two coasts to six minutes by car, from one and a half hours that was required for the ferry across the water. It's worth noting that the bridge and its central span stretching 6,637 feet are called the suspension bridge with the largest average span in the world. It became the longest bridge of its type in the world and surpassed the Akashi Kaiko Bridge in Japan that held the title with a central span length of 6,532 feet and a total length of 12,831 feet. The project was finished a year ahead of schedule in just four years, with a total cost of 3.1 billion euros, over the planned 2.5 billion. Besides the bridge and 60 miles of highway, it also has two approach viaducts, four reinforced cement viaducts, six underground bridges, 38 crossovers, five above-ground bridges, and 43 underground crossings. They did not pay for the project. The bridges and highway will be paid for by users over 11 years, meaning there will be a toll. The toll will be 200 lira, or 12.2 euros. Turkish President Recep Erdogan announced if the company cannot recuperate its expenses over that period, then the difference will be paid for by the government. The fiscal guarantee for a year of crossing the bridge is estimated at 16,425 vehicles or 45,000 cars a day. If there will be less traffic than this estimate, then the difference will be paid for by the government. If you consider that the first Bosporus suspension bridge that connected the two sides of Istanbul in 1973, as well as the two others, now see over 200,000 vehicles a day, then the Turkish treasury won't suffer much, if at all, and only in the beginning. The bridge across the Dardanelles is at the southern entrance to the Sea of Marmara, towards Istanbul, is the only route to the Black Sea to the north. The lower part of the highway is about 230 feet above the water, which lets even the largest ocean-faring ships pass under. This project will let Turkey save on fuel and emissions, valued at 415 million euros a year. According to experts' estimations, the positive economic effect from the bridge across the Dardanelles on the Turkish GDP over time will reach 2.4 billion euros per annum, as well as open 118,000 positions, with the bridge becoming the government's property in 11 years. Not bad. But the most important thing is that Kanakel will become an alternate and shorter route from Istanbul to the southeast part of the country, shortening the time to deliver goods from the west and northwest. And of course, it will provide transport connections between Asia and Europe because refrigerators and trailers, tourist buses and light cars 
won't need to wait in long lines for ferries to cross the Dardanelles to the east and back. This project will provide a smooth trade route from Beijing to London and improve international tourism. In the early days of construction, Prices on homes in the Lapsican region grew day over day, resulting in a boom in the construction industry. Prices on land and homes grew almost four times during the bridge's construction. And that growth has increased even more since the bridge has come into use. The bridge has lighting and is colored in Turkey's national flag's colors. British analysts write, the history of the construction demonstrates the victory of peace and international cooperation. Cranes were brought from Australia. The project was designed by Danish architects and engineers from South Korea helped in the construction. It resulted in an elegant bridge connecting Europe and Asia. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like and comment. Let me know if you want to go on this bridge someday. And we'll see you next time.